Hi everybody, it's Marnie Martin with Vista Wine Group and you're watching the BC Wine Show, where I interview some of BC's most successful winemakers and industry pros as to how and why they do what they do and what they're up to next. So pour yourself a glass and we'll see you on the inside. Hi everybody and welcome to the BC Wine Show. I'm Marnie Martin with Vista Wine Group and today I have Ryan Whittup from Indigenous World Winery from beautiful West Kelowna. Welcome Ryan, how are you today? I'm doing great. Uh, thanks for having me on the show. It's a great opportunity to, to speak about you know the winery and things that are going on right now and what we're kind of doing and yeah it's a, a, I really appreciate the opportunity to be on with you. Yeah, it's great. I feel like we've talked on the phone a million times and we've never really done a face-to-face. -face. I know, it's nice to have the face to the name. It is, for sure. <laughs> so maybe tell us a little bit, I know that Indigenous World is a unique um, winery in that it's got a very big history in especially West Kelowna with the Louis family. So can you talk about um, a little bit about the history that goes behind the winery and how it kind of came to open in that region yeah so um we'll start with the owner so robert louis is a very well-known speaker uh throughout not just british columbia and canada but internationally he's uh he was served on chief and counsel for the west bank first nations uh on and off for 24 years and so him and his wife bernice are very passionate about their their history and their and their culture um and uh, obviously working for government, you get to do a lot of fun dinners and things like that. And, and they really developed a, a big passion for fine wine. Robert actually as a child worked in some of the vineyards and the orchards uh, here in the Okanagan. Um, him and his family migrated up and down the valley. So he's got that sort of farming background as well, which is um, for, I don't think a lot of people really realize, but um, the wine industry is, I mean, it's, it's a farm industry. and. Uh, it, it's mostly farming. It's um, uh, it's glamour farming, but it's it's farming nonetheless. And so, um, little magic. Little magic, yeah. There's there's some fun involved in it, but it's I mean it's ninety percent farming, and then you get this beautiful product at the end. So after the Vancouver Olympics, um, which were a huge success, uh, it became quite apparent that there was a, a huge appetite for um, North American Indigenous cultural tourist type uh, things and uh, and so Robert and Bernice were sitting in their kitchen one day looking over the property and I thought man would we ever love to have a, a, a place where people can come and enjoy food and wine and beverage and hospitality mm -hmm. and but something with a cultural twist to it we've got a winery and a distillery now um, which uh, have um, cultural ties in the products. I like to think of wine in the most romantic sense is that it's a, um, it represents a time and a place. The best wines in the world, you can taste where they're from. And uh, so that's really what we're trying to accomplish here is, is allow people to experience um, where these people are from and, and, and the land that has, has you know, uh, nurtured their people for thousands of years. Excellent. So, um, obviously, this year is a little different than any other year with some of the interesting things we're, we're dealing with, with the COVID situation. But um, how are you guys sort of changing the way you do things at the winery to still get your product to the consumer? And are there any special things that you're sort of offering to encourage people to still continue to buy local? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, in, you know, we're seeing that, uh, especially... Um, especially now, and I mean, it had been growing a, ten, a, a growing trend to buy local for a number of years and supporting the local community. But especially now at these tough times and you see these small businesses that are struggling uh, and you know, it's your neighbor who's out of a job or your neighbor that's struggling to keep their business alive. Um, that really hits home for a lot of people. And so a lot of people are uh, focusing more on buying local and helping support right. their neighbors and their their communities. Uh, we are offering free shipping of three bottles or more anywhere in uh, British Columbia and free shipping for six bottles or more anywhere in Canada, uh, with the exception of Ontario, which there's some legalities there. Um, we're really just trying to make it easy 
for people to stay home and still enjoy uh, a local product uh, and have it delivered to the front door. And that's really important and special too. And I think you're right. It does give you that just a little bit more of that, you know, face-to-face -face personal touch that maybe, you know, I think even though this is weird, um, there's some good things coming out of it as well. So, so that's, yeah, that's great to hear that you're getting a good response from people. So do you guys have anything new happening at the winery this year that you're excited about? Any new wines? Any new changes? Um, anything specific that you want to talk about or promote? We do specialize in a lot of you know, small boutique style releases. So uh, uh, today actually we are bottling our 2017 Syrah and 2018 Cabernet Franc. So those are coming down the line um, probably within the next month. So that's really exciting for us. Um, our flagship wine, Simo, the 2015 vintage, is just being finished right now. So we uh, had a little bit of a packaging change on it this year to sort of add a, a little more of a personal touch to it. So we're, we have someone who's hand dipping uh, each bottle in wax uh, with a little seal on top. I think the most exciting thing that we've got right now, though, is, as I alluded to before, is, is our distillery. Uh, it was supposed to be launching in, in April. Um, and I mean, that's been a bit challenging to launch a distillery uh, when you can't go out. <laughs> so, um, but that's a, a really, you know, beautiful part of Indigenous World here is um, we, it's a whiskey focused distillery, but we've released vodka with gin coming out and then our first whiskey will come out in July or August. But it also gives us the ability to focus on um, some more dessert style wines uh, going down the future. So, you know, port styles and as we're able to, to produce our own um, grape spirit for our, uh, for our wine. Very exciting that we have the opportunity to be able to, to do those kinds of things. Yeah, that's um, very cool. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. So I, ha I was going to ask you, we talked a little bit um, before this interview about keto and um, it seems to be a big part of the conversation right now and keto friendly wines seem to be getting, you know, a little bit more publicity. And of course it, there seems to be a little bit of a confusion among the consumers about what the grams per liter of residual sugar actually means. Um, and so if you don't mind speaking to that a little bit and helping us to understand that a bit more, and then maybe talk to us about some of the wines that you have in store that are actually, um, keto friendly, which I think would be four grams or less of residual sugar. Absolutely. So yeah, sugar is, uh, it's confusing to people because uh, people often think that, you know, what an off dry wine is, is sweet actually, or um, something that's fruity is sweet when it, that's not actually representative of the amount of sugar in a bottle. When we talk dry wines, that's you know, less than 10 grams of sugar per liter. Um, and off dry is you know, 10 to 30 and then you're getting into the sweet categories after that. But sugar and acid are really uh, the factors that, that have to work hand in hand. So um, you can have a really fruity, sweet tasting wine if, uh, if it doesn't have a lot of acid in it. So acid sort of hides sugar. So um, we like to think uh, big German Rieslings uh, have generally speaking a lot a lot like 40 plus grams of sugar in it but you don't notice it because they have very high acidity um, and so those two things work really hand in hand um, the other side of it too is is uh, I think a lot of people don't realize is alcohol percentage makes a, a, is a great indicator of actual sugar in a bottle so um, to take my winemakers uh, catchphrase um, wine is uh, well alcohol eats sugar and poops out alcohol so um, wine is yeast poop. Um, and so, um, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to quote you on that, but oh, don't quote you. <laughs> but, um, so if it's, it's fun for people, if you don't, you know, there's a lot of confusion in, on shelves oftentimes where you're picking up two bottles of, of say Pinot Gris or Gewürztraminer and you can't tell which one is sweeter. Um, a really good indicator for people is to, to look at the alcohol percentage of it. So, um, if you have two wines, uh, the same say varietal from the same area one with higher alcohol will have less sugar in it because the yeast has eaten that sugar um, and created alcohol so it's a really great indicator uh, it's not always bulletproof but a, a good way to try and figure out what's going to be a little sweeter or, or less sweet in terms of actual sugar um, we here at indigenous world we generally only produce 
one wine a year that wouldn't be keto friendly. Every other wine we do um, is generally three grams or less of residual sugar. So uh, all, okay. almost all of our wines are, are keto friendly. Um, if you're ever confused or you're not sure, um, it's best to uh, check, up, check our website. You can find the technical notes there uh, and they'll tell you. Um, but even our Gewurz we have, uh, except for one vintage, have always done as a dry Gewurz with two grams of sugar or less. So uh, if that's your, you know, a favorite style of wine, you love that fresh lychee, grapefruit, and rose petal, um, but you want something that's not sweet and cloying and um, you grab a bottle of our Gewurz you're going to be safe. There are a lot of people that have gluten sensitivities uh, and, um, you know, and vegan or looking for vegan wines. And, and there's a lot of big buzzwords out there um, and so um, all, all but two of our wines are vegan as well so we use bench night which is a clay for fining so uh, okay. only Pinot Noir and Simu have any um, egg products in them uh, and uh, um, gluten which was interesting to me I didn't realize but um, uh, you find gluten in barrels so they use it for sealing barrels so uh, barrel aged wines are for people who are super gluten tolerant you probably want to stay away from wooded wines but uh, unwooded wines are, are going to be safe good so so i think we can find you guys at um www.indigenousworld.ca or is it dot com indigenousworldwinery.com indigenousworldwinery.com okay Perfect. and yeah. so um all the wines except for two are vegan bcvqa and yeah, that's good information for people. So don't hesitate if you haven't tried the Indigenous World wine to go looking for it at your local stores. Um, do you where where can you find it where you are? So we, we are uh, we're again a, a sort of a smaller medium sized winery. So um, most private liquor stores carry a couple of our products. Um, Save on Foods has been an amazing partner with us since we opened, uh, and you can find a lot of our wines at Save On Foods. And there is a, a, a store finder on our website. So if you're unsure, uh, check that out uh, on the where to find us. Um, but again, it's free shipping in British Columbia. So take the opportunity to go to the website, order yourself, you know, a couple bottles. Like I said, it's three bottles, uh, free shipping for three bottles or more in BC. So, I mean, that's you can get good everything there. Yeah. Awesome. So um, if somebody was to come, I mean, obviously people can't come right now to the winery, but when you guys are back up and running again and it's business as usual, what can a consumer expect to find and what's the experience that they'll have up at Indigenous World Winery? Yeah, so um, I mean, I will mention our wine shop is open for sale right now, but uh, the, the government has suspended tasting licenses for everybody in the province, so uh, you don't get to go sample. Um, so when you come visit the winery, um, you'll First thing you'll notice is, is a stunning view looking north towards uh, over Lake Okanagan, uh, which you can't see from the highway. So it's always a bit of a surprise when people pull down the drive and yeah. suddenly this beautiful vista opens up in front of you. Um, we have uh, a large teepee on site, uh, a sort of a, a roadside attraction landmark. Um, teepees are not uh, traditionally uh, an Okanagan cultural um, mode of of lodging, they use something called quitsi or or kukubi, which are pit houses. Uh, but it's it's one of those things that's um, universally recognizable as an indigenous um, right an indigenous icon. Uh, and so we do some dinners and things in there from time to time. Um, when you come into the wine shop, we have a beautiful little gift shop. When you walk in, uh, featuring a lot of uh, local and uh, well, British Columbia indigenous artists. Um, a full tasting bar, so uh, we have, we'll get about 16 people around our tasting bar and then a table for larger people. Uh, a beautiful um, patio wrapping around the building where you can enjoy the view. Uh, it's open in the summertime, so you can come grab a bottle of wine uh, and a uh, quick bite. And then downstairs we have, on the lower level, we have uh, a restaurant partners called Red Fox Club, uh, which is um, a restaurant that specializes in call it modern native cuisine. Uh, and so Chef Andrea Callan uh, has traveled all over the world and uh, learned a lot about uh, sustainable farming and gathering and, and you know, some of the traditional foods that the indigenous people 
uh, in British Columbia and even across North America have eaten. And so um, she sort of modernized some of the recipes, um, but lots of beautiful game uh, dishes, elk and bison and venison, and we use hide a wild salmon. Um, they make fresh bannock every day for their flatbreads. Um, everything is made in house, locally sourced, uh, where we can find it. Um, so uh, amazing dining experience as well. Um, and uh, so, yeah, we, it's a really great reason for people to come and, and stay for a while and, and enjoy themselves um, and, you know, learn a little bit about the, the silks culture of the Okanagan. That sounds fantastic. Definitely sounds like it's worth a visit. And uh, next time I get to Kelowna, I will be there for dinner for certain. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Yes. Um, so the other thing I wanted to ask you was about your wine club. I know you guys are doing some special things and you've got, is it the Snina Wine Club? Nina Sellers Wine Club, yeah. Okay. So you will notice uh, our logo is is it's called a Snina, uh, which is the silks word for owl, uh, and our logo is uh, was taken from a painting that was given to the Louis family when they were married, um, which is an owl, which is the guardian of the land uh, at night and uh, takes your spirit up to the skies, uh, and then an eagle, so it's a, an eagle in transformational stage turning into an owl. Um, so, Christina Sellers Wine Club, um, we've taken a bit of a different approach with our wine club. Um, so, it's entirely customizable. So, you have, there are no packages to choose from. You choose what you want uh, in your wine club shipment. It's two shipments a year for six bottles uh, minimum. Um, we offer, again, free shipping in British Columbia to all of our wine club members on six bottles or more, uh, which has obviously changed right now during the COVID crisis. Uh, and it's a, a small shipping fee anywhere else in Canada um, as well. And then we offer a number of benefits to our wine club members. So pre-release parties, uh, we do hold back um, wines for the wine club uh, exclusively. So we'll sell out of things and, and hold on to some of these beautiful bottles for, for the wine club as well. We want to, to give you what, what you want. Yeah, that's fantastic. You don't see that very often. Usually there's some, you know, specific things that kind of get put into the packages for the wine club members, which, you know, is good too. But uh, that sounds like a really great offering for sure. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate you sitting and spending some time with me today. I do have one last question for you, and it's the one I ask at the end of each interview. It's what's in your glass? And I mean, what is your... Uh, current favorite BC wine that is not produced in Indigenous world? That's a tough one. Uh, <laughs> one of the benefits of working in this industry is you get to get to know a lot of people and try a lot of things. Um, so um, I would have to say what's in my glass right now, uh, it has been a favorite of mine for, for a number of years, is the Sperling Old Vines Riesling. Um, last year for Christmas I managed to scrounge up four different vintages and had a little personal vintage tasting party for myself around Christmas time. Um, but they're uh, by far one of my favorite Riesling producers um, in all of British Columbia. And there are some amazing Rieslings up there. But yeah. that, uh, that's a go-to for me uh, quite regularly uh, when I can get my hands on it. It's, uh, it it's, I love those sort of those petrol and, and sweet fruit notes and, and honey and lime. And um, it just... It just, it, it turns my crank. It's, it's, what I'm, yeah. That's, I know, I, I love that wine too. It's actually, I, I haven't tried all four vintages like you, but <laughs> <laughs> not lucky. I'll have to give myself a better gift this year, I guess. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you again for spending some time with us. Hopefully, we can do this again. And um, I hope you stay safe and well in the next little while. And we will talk again very soon. Yeah, you stay safe and healthy. And thank you again for having me on. You, you bet. Thanks, Ryan. And now I'd like to hear from you. If you have a comment or a question for a future guest, please put it in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this episode, please don't forget to hit the like or subscribe button right down below. You know you want to. Thanks for joining us today on the BC Wine Show. And until next time, stay well, be kind, and as always, enjoy responsibly.